What's up? Welcome to another live stream from you know who. We're gonna raid binders deal, and right now my next thing is to create teleports and then grenades. So that's gonna be fun. I've already got um, teleports sort of started. I've added a bit of extra data that I can put into a collision component. And where's gonna let's see, where's there's one of the teleports uh here. This is a teleport. So we'll put some kind of like entity right here, and uh when you step on it, it'll teleport you to all the way to the other side. Got oh gosh, this frame rate's horrible right now. Hold on a second, let's check this out. This happens from time to time. Sometimes it's like trying to run a backup in the process in the background. Come on. No. Hmm. Well, I'm getting a new laptop soon. That is oh man, I'm excited about that. I'll be done with this two core machine and move on to at least a four core. Okay, here we go. So when you step on an entity we want to set the position to the object's collisions extra. So I'm creating a, um, a, an entity called teleport that will just represent um, the entity that you will step on to teleport. And let's actually give it some kind of like, let's, let's voxel up something real quick for that. copy over just uh, like voxel.vox .vox. teleport we'll call this teleport a zero I always uh, just copy the file there in um, the command line because inside of magica voxel I've got all these different keyboard shortcuts that magically swizzle everything up to be how I like to use my left hand so whenever I try and save a new file, it saves it as JKLL, you know, like all this weird stuff. Okay. Teleport A. Let's just draw something. Let's make it 20 by, whoops, don't press the tab key. 20 by 20 by 1. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, I like this white, but let's go with something more ooh, like that. Draw some kind of pattern. Okay, that'll do for now, just to get something on the on the ground representing this entity. Gosh, I gotta pull out all this old mock-up code. I had this all this 2D system with all these sprites for mocking all the gameplay up, but at this point, we're past that point. <laughs> at this point, we're past that point. That's right, we're not looking back. Okay, so this is teleport A. Global occlude, yeah. Right, this is this thing never thing never rotates. Doesn't have a shadow. I think there's all the render flags we need. Global occlude. Position, collision. 
Okay, here we go. The extra is going to be a vector this time. And the vector is, oh, actually, we leave the extra alone. And when we create the teleport entity, we have to add a specific teleport point. So, oh, actually, oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this isn't too hard. In systems, we'll create a teleport entity. You know what? I just had some uh, something I want to check on. Inside game show, is there some way for me to show my keyboard? Hmm. I'll figure it out later. I want to do some kind of overlay though, so you can always see what keys I'm pressing. Because I'm always in Vim, doing like Vim commands like J. I'm pressing J right now. I'm pressing K right here. It'd be nice if you could see what keys I'm pressing. Um, there's got to be some kind of like overlay utility I can use for that. But anyways, let's go create these teleports. Um, I think I've already got the... Here we go, teleports. There's a marker at each teleport. We'll create a marker and we'll create the teleport entity. In fact, that should take its id. So we create a teleport. This is uh, what entity... Zero is the id. We're passing it in case we already reserved an id. So Create it right at that pause. Where are those position flags? Bits none. Yeah. Okay. We'll get this entity. And set its collision dot extra. This is where it's going to warp to. So we want it to be... Um, Oh, uh, there's a function that gets the position. Uh, what is it? Get entity pause, of course. Hmm. I think I know what to do here. Oh, now I'm lost. Okay, so Getting the entity pause. There's another version of this. Get entity pause has two versions. That one, what that one, the V3 pause. All right. Oh, we need this like that. There we go. So we're creating the teleport entity, assigning its id, getting it, and then calling get any pause. But I want the teleports to warp themselves directly diagonal across the arena. So whatever ax, which is the arena's arena x or screen x, 
the number of screens in arena space, basically. We just put negative values on both of those, and then it'll swap to the other, whatever, whichever uh, teleport this is, it'll swap to the other one. It should work. Let's get a uh, breakpoint on that and check it out. Shoot, should I check it? I should, I should use, um, I should use the command line. Okay, I've been installing LLDB. Uh, let's do this. Try, dude. Still trying to figure this out. I don't, I'm not that great at LLDB. So, all right. So we've got the current executable. We want to go. Okay, so I'm hitting escape to go out of that thing's terminal mode, and then I'm going up to this window here. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Wait, is it still an open window? Damn, I lost it. Oh, well, shoot, do I just run again? Looks like it, okay. Okay, escape, go up to this window. Now I'm just switching, with, there we go. Switch windows and I can get it. And now I can set a breakpoint here with, oh gosh, I don't know, I don't know how, it's GDB breakpoint toggle, there it is. Boom, cool, we got that. So now I'm switching down to that window again and calling run. Okay, so it's running. Gosh, this is the first time I'm really using the command line to debug. There we go. Okay, so we've hit our breakpoint. We've got the executable running there in the background. Um, we hit our breakpoint and <laughs> we're broke at system. Okay, we're there. Oh, sweet. If you can tell, the, the current line I'm on, I keep typing GWK because I had got to hit escape there. Okay, but anyways, there's this little triangle there next to the current line. That means there's a breakpoint right here. Actually, no, that's where the current uh, debug position is. So this is kind of cool. This is an integrated LLDB with the command line. Like we've got this kind of regular LLDB stuff going on down here where you can enter in commands like print variable. What do we want to print here? Um, we want to print uh, print E to start with. Okay, but it's entity 4166. We've got a summary string parsing error. That tends to happen whenever I need to recompile the whole project. I don't know what's up with that. But like it's debug data gets a little bit off. It's it's temporary intermediate compilation files get a little bit off, and then all of a sudden LLDB has a summary string parsing error for every string. Huh. Why is it so prone to that though? Oh and anyways. Let's say I want to know that entity's what do I want to know about the entity? The entity's collision. Print e dot collision. See, my point in trying to do some LLDB stuff or get, get good at it with the command line is that I think some of it could be faster than trying to debug with Xcode. Having debug, having Xcode in the open in the background uses more CPU anyways. And um, debugging with it is really nice. It's really nice. I mean, Xcode is awesome. It's got a great debugger. But the problem is that uh, you have to use the mouse. So you're, I constantly have to like, oh, what's that variable? And I have to like move the mouse over here and see what that, inspect this variable, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of mousing around. This just can be inherently slower than the command line. If you're really fast with the command line, you can debug faster. So my goal there is to save some time debugging. If I could get really good at this command line debugging. Anyways, okay, we got an extra of zero, zero, zero. Great, that's what we want to know. All right, so we're going to step the next line. Oh, shoot. Is it next? N? Yeah. Sweet. N is the next line. Cool. We step over. Oh, N is the step over. That's what I, kind of what I wanted to do anyways. Okay, so let's print um, e.collision again. Great. Okay, we've got the extra at 1600, 1760. And our position, print pause. Is 928.416. Oh, cool. I think that worked. Okay, we need another breakpoint though. Um, oops, I gotta escape and then do GW OK to get up to this window. Okay, I wanna untoggle the breakpoint here. Ah, I'm seeing what kind of Vim commands I need to set up. 
in my VM, VimRC, I'll probably need to set some kind of breakpoint or some kind of like keystroke combo that I can quickly toggle a breakpoint at the current line. I wonder if I can make that smart. So um, I could toggle a breakpoint inside Vim if I'm using the LLDB debugger from the command line. And then if I'm not using that, then it automatically switches to Xcode and sets a breakpoint there on the on the right line. I think I can do that. That'd be cool. Okay. So can it any pause? We've got the collisions extra set. We're gonna create a marker here at this point and a light beam. Um, but I would like to see if I step on the entity. Okay, so I want to toggle the breakpoint here. Dude, I just there we go. Okay, so now we don't have that breakpoint anymore. Um, want to set a breakpoint though in the move system right here actually yeah obj category building yeah let's set a breakpoint right here and go down here run it again oh what's continue so just oh sweet there we go okay process was resuming there we go cool the, I did have to alt tab back into the game right there. It'd be nice if some it was smart enough for, to switch back to that project. Oh, this uh, symbol looks really dirty on the ground right there. But let's see if it works. If I step on this, yeah. Okay, so here's another problem with debugging from the command line. I, I it appears that I've hit that breakpoint, but um. Yeah, all my inputs all like you know locked up or whatever. It's basically it's waiting for my for LLDB here in the background. So, anyways, I had to basically what I had to do there was Alt Tab out of the game back into the command line here when it set the breakpoint. Both of those things would be really nice if when I resume it, I could I could probably figure this out like resume somehow some keystroke to resume quickly. That all that automatically all tabs back into the game, and then when I want want to, oh, it'd be so cool if it when it actually hit a breakpoint that it switched me back into the command line, huh? Okay, thoughts of debugging aside, let's move on with the actual coding here. All right, so we're there. We touched it. Oh, we need to set some kind of. It's gonna warp us again and again and again and again. But uh, let's let it step. Next. Okay, let's print box. Okay. Next. Cool. Yeah, it's a valid position. And we would just set our position to that. And, um,. What's going to happen here is it's going to keep infinitely warping us back and forth and back and forth between these two different entities. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and witness that. <clears throat> what we're going to need to do is set some kind of uh, variable, maybe in the collision or in the move component or something like that, that sets what entity it's currently colliding with or to ignore. Hmm. It almost it would be nice if there was actually a list of entities that a collision component should ignore. So when you call get collisions, it doesn't even register some components. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. In Songbringer, um I eventually kind of worked towards a system like that. At first, I just had this janky kind of code in the move system that um, for the current 
tick, the current iteration of moving an entity, it would check if it was already stepping on some kind of thing that it shouldn't. And if it was, it just ignored it for a while. So if you somehow got out of bounds, or you're stepping on the sky or something weird, it just allowed you to keep going until you got back onto some uh, regular ter territory. And it did that by changing masks. Um, but this I eventually up upgraded that whole system to actually specifically ignore a certain entity that um, that it was stepping on. And that way it could get more specific about what to do for certain types of entities and stuff like that. So I think maybe that is the best way to go with this new game engine, or this slightly improved game engine, really, is all it is. Um, yeah, so what happened here? Run. Let's just run. No, continue. Okay, the process is resuming. Whoa. Okay, it teleported me, but... Oh, okay, so it teleported me to somewhere that... The other one isn't, is that right? What the heck is going on here? Oh, we got the breakpoint. Hey, wait, it switched back that time. What? That's great. Let's just run it without the debugger here. Man, those are some mangled pixels. Really got to improve that. Okay, 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 okay. So let's run down here to this teleport. Yeah, it teleported, <laughs> teleported me to the wrong place. Or the coordinates are wrong on that. Actually, that kind of works. Go into God mode. Go all the way to this uh, one of these other ones. Okay, there's not one there. Dude, it's going really slow today. I must have really. I must have. What the heck? Could it possibly be going this slow? Nine frames a second. So it appears that that's not exactly directly across the arena. Oh! Oh no, it's not that. Okay, we could do it, we could do this another way. In fact, well, hold on. What this might need is just SX minus CX and SY minus CY. Or it might be plus CX and CY. Whoops. Yeah, it's backing up again. Uh, it's not it's not even backing up but the bit the, the servers running I thought the things were going slow today. Whew, 
there, finally. I can't wait to get a new laptop. Cool. All right. That's better. Okay, so this is this might be correct, or I could do another way to approach that math so that we actually warp to the the right place on the other side. Nope, that wasn't it. Let's try plus. Oh, whoops. Maybe that was it. Hmm. No, I think it must have been plus. This is called the WTF method. You just type some things in, run it, and go WTF. That's not it either. Okay, that didn't help at all, neither of these. I think... We go zero there, and we go zero here, and we go negative OX plus CX. Wait, maybe it's like this. <laughs> This is totally WTF right here. I have no idea if this is right. I feel like it might be. Oh my god, it worked! Oh, it worked! <laughs> oh, I love it. Total random guess at the mathematics right there. Just kind of an intuitive... It's like shooting from the hip right there. But um, So we, we saw what happened there was uh, it warped me directly to the right other teleport point, but that other teleport point... Uh, As soon as I moved, it warped me back to the other one. So it's the move system is, is the one that d triggers all that. So we, um, shoot, maybe it should be the collision system. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is a whole collision component we're checking here. Oh, that's, this only does it when you move this. The other one would, oh yeah, I would have to run every time you ever ticked a collision. It's kind of a little, it's a little bit more efficient. Okay. So yeah, we need, oh, we either need to teleport the player a little bit in front of it. Actually kind of a sim more simple way to do it. Let's just do that. Okay, this is either plus or, oh, wait, no, we got this. It's sine. Hold on. What is this? We have sine x. Oh, sine x and sine y. That's right. Where are they? Yeah, sine x, sine y. Ah. Okay. 
Okay, CX times sine X times two. Well, two times sine X. So that puts us two paces in front, or two blocks in front of Might be minus. It's supposed to be plus. I actually think one is supposed to be plus and one is supposed to be minus. But whoa, no, wait, one just should be. This is a. Is this a diagonal? We're at a. This. Hmm. We got it worked. Dude, that's awesome. Okay, does the other ones work? Man, the WTF method is working really good today. This is awesome. Where the hell is that other teleport? There we go. Boom, it works. Boop. Boop. Shit, yeah. I want to see other players using it. Come on, dumb AI. You're going to work? You're going to, you're going to like this? Probably all dead by now. This game goes by crazy fast. Okay, that totally works. I love it. And we've got, we still got one. Every one of these. There's one there. One we already saw. One here. I think there's eight item. There's eight places where you can get an item. Wait, so there's a mm, one there, two, three, four. Uh, how many teleports do we have, by the way? Let's confirm that. I wish you do grenades, dude. It's been too long. We've dedicated too much of the stream already to teleports and item locations. Well, we got to pick up an item though to get the grenades. But anyways, we'll just start doing grenades without be picking up the item, and then we'll yeah, pretty soon we'll have items to be able to pick up. This is sweet. Okay, let's just see how many teleports there are though. There's one. Wait, what? That hasn't. Damn, X code is slow. Okay, there's one at negative fifteen forty seven. Fifteen forty seven. I'm sensing a pattern. Yep. Negative fifteen forty seven and fifteen forty seven. Four. Cool. All right. Cool. Let's check us in. Okay, that model is really not that great, but anyways, we'll check it in as it is. We'll go, I'm going here in this older version of Magicka, which saves more efficient files. Let's check over the code we changed. 
So I made extra, the collision component now has an extra field. Well, it did have an integer extra, now it's a vector three extra. So we can store up to three different pieces of data in that extra there for position or whatever, miscellaneous stuff. Cool, so in our move system, we've got something that can teleport. And then in the systems, when we create, uh, when we at those teleport positions, we create a teleport entity and then set it's e.collision.extra. Actually, to make this a little bit more correct, we need this to be e if e.collision. Just in case that entity is bad or it doesn't have a collision component for some weird reason, it should, but this is game development here. We gotta be bulletproof. God. Oh, you know what? Oh, entities face a certain... Oh, that's what it is. He looks so crazy janky at the beginning because it's right here in Create Player. I got this. Uh. We make the end, the player face a certain direction here. Let's set this rotation um, to 45 degree angles rather than 15. That's better. No wonder the pixels were so messed up. We're at 15 degree angles, which is like never going to be accurate. That's a little bit better. Okay, one thing at a time. Let's go ahead and check this all in. Nice, we created teleport entities that fast. All right, cool. Let's create some grenades. So, um, oh god, this is going to be a whole different explosive system and things like that. Um, Alright, well we first need a grenade entity. I guess it's kind of like the boomerang entity. And our abilities, we need a grenade ability. I think I've already got it, right? I call it bomb, but I want that to be grenade. Ability.cpp doesn't now. Oh, there, there it is. Grenade. Okay, we need a to use the grenade now. Input system, we'll create something like uh, use boomerang. Yep, 
Yo, what's up, Zachware? How's it going? Welcome. All right, we need some uh, a lot of the same code here for creating grenades is very similar to creating a boomerang. Let's just copy all that. Grenades. Oh yeah. Can you use grenade? If we don't already have a grenade. By the way, let's open up the grenade. Not the color green. Grenade. Yeah, you made a... NPC character? Sprite? Cool, man. Hey, that's beautiful. Body shape, foot size, nose. Cool, man. I like it. So we'll start by calling it a grenade. We need some grenade box files, too. Copy over just boomerang stuff. And let's open that up in Magicka and make it look sort of like a grenade rather than a, a top hat. Hmm, what color should they be? Well, it could be these gray, maybe. You can set sphere mode. Oh wait, we want to first do a little line to put it on. This is 16 by 16, let's make it 17 by 17. Yeah, there we go, right in the middle. We'll add a couple voxels to that. So we get up to a height where we can actually create a sphere. There we go. We get out of this sphere mode and erase that and that. Okay. This might work to represent a grenade for now. Oh, let's put it right on the ground there. This little 3D box here. Okay, so we got a grenade. Let's we'll need to see how what color it is and you know in the game and all that. Okay, so but we've got the the model file. Can rotate grenades? No, ro 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 these don't rotate. They do occlude. Oh. Do we even have the keyword global occlude anymore? Yeah. 
Okay. Anchor point offset. Yeah, put it offset it a little bit. No, actually, we don't want to offset these. Grenades do a lot of damage. Okay, so we need a little bit of a timer, so the grenade explodes after a certain amount of time, and also it explodes if it hurts, or it's, if it hits the ground. Yeah, so we'll add a movement mask. If it hits a player, a tree, a rock, something permanent, any of those, it'll stop moving. We can go if timer. I think if we're just stuck, if stuck, remove. Okay, what this will probably do is cause the grenade to fly out straight at first, but we'll add in some Z acceleration too, so that it actually has a grenade motion. Yeah, we don't have this sally forth and return, or catch, or bounce. We just have a timer. Timer is less than zero. Remove. And explode. What we probably want to do whenever we do these removes is we do like spawn some spawn a grenade explosion so there's like a special entity for a grenade explosion and that way it can do some explosive damage correctly and cover the right area correctly and all that kind of stuff do I even have spawn I think I have spawn working Okay, we need a grenade explosion then. Yo, what's up, Buegas? How you doing today? Alright, let's get this grenade explosion open as well. Guess you can have an animation. Uh, I'm working on grenades. I'm creating some grenade entities for Wraithbinder. So, as a player, you'll be able to run around the battlegrounds. So you start with the sword, you start with the boomerang, and you have a sky bot like a jib. And um, yeah, and then you can pick up uh, grenades and a blink orb and a couple other items. Yeah, this is a new game. Yep, it's called Wraithbinder. 
And it's basically Songbringer, like deathmatchy. It's a deathmatchy Songbringer. It's multiplayer. You're inside an arena. Everybody's trying to kill each other. It's totally unfair. And uh, when you die, you actually get to be your. You become part of the team of the person that killed you. So you become a wraith, actually, that's bound to the person that kills you. So that, hence the name Wraith Binder. So that's the twist to it. So yeah, it'll be a basically a song a, a songbringer universe, but multiplayer. Cool. Glad you. I'm glad that name is ringing is perfect for you. It seems to be working quite well. It's nice. It's uh, it's kind of songbringer y in the name, but uh, yeah. So we got a category bomb and then flags, explosive, damage eight for the grenade explosion. We can't, oh, I guess we can rotate it. <laughs> right, right on. What you working on, man? What's going on? Oh, we got to be able to hit players too. Not trees. Actually, yeah, we'll leave trees for now. I haven't figured out all the trees and rocks thing yet. But you'll be able to damage all the entities around you in this game. Like all the rocks and pillars and things like that. You'll be able to hurt them with grenade explosions or your sword. Second year, Uni? Yeah, a lot of stress. I hear that, man. Cool, dude. Yeah, Twitch streams are your relief. That's great. Ah, oh, your relaxation. That's right. Let go of that stress. You don't need it. You definitely don't need it 24 hours a day. But I know what it's like, man. When I was releasing Songbringer, it was like, that's that probably the most stress I ever experienced. It really did some things to my body. Like, I, I lost some health. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Stress is actually so much... It's powerful. It is more powerful than you would think it could possibly be, but it can really affect your health. Um, I learned that the hard way. Damn. I'm glad you're doing some relaxing stuff, man. Watching some Twitch streams. Just kicking back. Going into recreation mode. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean, feeling like a potato all day. Whew. Yep. Oh, all we need to do is hook up a used grenade. Okay, so if we have no grenades. Here's our use grenade function. If we can use the grenade, then we do we use the grenade? Let's delete all this code because it's not really working yet for that one anyways. Uh, there's going to be the regular grenade and then there's going to be a mine. So those might be kind of fun. Like you could set some mines and explode them when you're not quite nearby. Um, Songbringer had the regular old bomb where you would just set down the bomb and um, after a few seconds it would explode. But that doesn't seem like it's going to be the right thing for a multiplayer game, right? If you have 10 other players, or 10 players, you're all running around. Or actually, it's going to be 8 players. Anyways, a bunch of players running around. You send down these bombs and after a few seconds they explode. The bomb really isn't that intelligent right it's you it's very obvious that you set it down and you know, three seconds later it explodes so as a human player it's going to be something you can easily avoid you know like oh that guy just dropped a bomb I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of the way actually maybe bombs would be good who who knows anyways you got any ideas what like other kinds of grenades you could have maybe like a scatter grenade or something like that a grenade that suits out a bunch of shrapnel Yeah, networking can be a total nightmare. Um, the 
problem is syncing. It's like keeping all your clients in the same exact game state, even though there's things like network lag and possibly missed input. It's a magical, you gotta be friggin' completely wizardly to really code networking well. That's, it's quite a challenge. And it's very difficult to catch bugs. You're like, shoot, in this one run, I, I caused this one bug, but it's so hard to duplicate the same bug again. Um, so yeah, I haven't gotten to that point yet. <laughs> I haven't done any, any networking yet, and I'm glad. Um, but that said, I have done a, a multiplayer game before, a real-time multiplayer game. So I have a good picture in mind of the difficult points, and if I can just steer my way through it in a nice, relaxed way, you know, like find some ways to become stronger at networking rather than uh, getting stressed out and frustrated that it's not working perfectly. I don't know. I'm sure that doing it a second time, I'll have a little bit of an easier time than my first time. You know what I mean? Sticky grenade. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Well, how would that work? Maybe, okay, because every player has a sky bot right? You have a little friend like Jib from Songbringer. Um, maybe you could sticky grenade onto somebody else's skybot and then as soon as the grenade gets near that player or as soon as the skybot gets back to near that player it'll explode. That'd be funny. That's a cool idea. Uh, no, there's no set date yet. This is way early. This is like very early stages of this game. So yeah, um, it could be, uh, but I do plan on having like a playable version of this game by the end of the year. Like I want to have something that you guys can start beta testing. It might be more like an alpha testing at that point, uh, but that's my goal. Have something playable by December. That would be great. And then spend I'll spend 2020 um, really refining it, like making the graphics awesome and I want to implement this hub world too. So it'll be, it'll be kind of like Songbringer in a sense where you, you kind of like in Songbringer, my point was I always wanted to like do things viscerally. Like you had to actually do something in the game rather than doing something in a menu. Um, and so I want to do that for this game too. So there won't be so much of a alpha or a meta game. There won't be, there won't be like a menu that you're like going through to get into the multiplayer game. It just, boom, drops you into a multiplayer world, and you move around that multiplayer world to communicate what you want to do. Like, if you want to enter a match, you head to a certain area and, and enter into the battlegrounds. So, yeah, cool, man, yeah. And uh, as soon as, like, we get to the point where alpha testing's up, I'll, I'll be sure to be promoting it and letting people in to the alpha test and um, creating, like, a Discord channel and things like that. I just want to, I want to do this game right. It's a multiplayer game. Is the the risk is that uh, it's hard to it can be hard to make a multiplayer game succeed because you really got to have enough critical mass. You got to have enough players. So hopefully I cross my fingers, I can pull this off. Oh, dude, don't worry about it. When I'm streaming, I'm here to be chatting mostly. This is this is more important to be marketing. I guess you know what I mean. I'm marketing here. I'm sharing what I'm doing. So yeah, it's important for me to share and but also to share with you, you know, and like see how you're doing. See what you're up to. But it's all here, man. All this work is just ready to flow on out. Watch this. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Whoa. We're already working. Releasing the grenade. If you can't use the grenade, then don't use the grenade. I do say, you can't use the grenade, don't use the grenade. Okay, this stuff is legacy code. We want to bu -bu 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 create a grenade. There we go. And then hook it up to the function. That's right, fast working. Wow. You see that? We need to hook it up here. Ability grenade calls the use grenade function. 
<laughs> voicing characters in my games. Um, I did that for one of my games, actually, for um, for Hero Bash. It was the game I made before Songbringer that didn't fly, uh, but it um, I, we did do the voices. My buddy and I both did the voices. I did like three voices, and he did like a lot of voices. He did like five or, five or six voices, something like that. We had a lot of cool voices in that game. It's a totally zany MOBA. But yeah, I've done it before. Uh, maybe I'll do it again. It depends on the game, you know what I mean? It has to be the right type of aesthetic for the game to really do voices. Hey, I mean, I'm talking about comical voices. But um, yeah, it also has to be the right aesthetic for regular voices. Just voice acting type voices. Like an adventure is a perfect thing for having voice acting. Or um, an RPG with lots of different story elements where you want everybody to talk. But I will say, it is a lot more work to do it that way. To add in voices for every single line in the game, especially if you have a lot of dialogue. Uh, but if you just have a few different like key points of dialogue that you, like a Warcraft style or a Starcraft style dialogue, you know, where you click on a unit and it says something, that's simple. Release great, yeah. Okay, and then when and in set role, let's just make every single entity be able to use every single player able to use grenades if they want. Even though the AI isn't programmed to use them yet, we'll be able to use grenades and dominate the arena. Yeah, exactly. Aesthetics. Pixely games don't have voices that often. Oh, it would make it more interesting. Now there you go. That's cool. What do you think about like uh, the dialogue style from Celeste? Have you played Celeste? I really like the dialogue in Celeste. They had uh, they had this voice that was like you know, like it was just this weird sound, right? That sounded kind of like a voice, but um, they modulated it. Like, they really programmed all of their lines in that game, so it would, like, it sounded, like, really human, even though it was just nonsensical sounds. It was super good. I really love the way Celeste did their, their uh, voice acting, I guess you could call it. It's not voice acting, this is their voice. Okay. Oh, things are running a lot faster now. Gosh, that backup was running in the background. It was just killing, killing my system here. Okay, where the hell am I going? Oh. Ow. We crashed. I think there's just one bug I'm trying to find. Yeah, value is infinite. Okay, we should have been running it in debug mode there. Let's run from debug mode this time. Yeah, it's a pretty lazy way to approach it. If, it. if it works, it works. Agreed. Agreed. One thing about debugging from the command line here is I've got to figure out how to make it more convenient. Like, um, I want it to automatically run as soon as it... Uh, right? I just had to type run there. And press enter. That is so much work. Typing run, pressing enter. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, grenades. All right, all right. Let's see if this works. That's the shield. Is this a grenade? Whoa. What happened? Oh, I think that's that's my grenade entity I just threw out. Why is it hurting me though? Okay, the grenades are not working at all. If I'm even pressing the right button. It did do something, right? It was doing something there. Okay. Let's keep debugging. We want to set a breakpoint in use grenade. Alright, we'll set a breakpoint right here. GDB breakpoint toggle. I gotta set up a shortcut for this. There we go. GB breakpoint toggle. Boom! We got one there. We'll run it again. 
Oops. I wish this was a little bit more. Still getting used to this command line debugging. Hopefully when I get good at it, I'll be super fast. Okay, I'm pressing the button. Okay, once again, I have to Alt-Tab back into... There we go. Okay, well, there, we're in the input system. Let's step in. What is the... LLDB step in. What is that? Yep, I got run. Oh, args. It's cool. Oh, oh. Attach. Oh, that's cool. You can attach to a process. I forgot you can do a oh, step. It's called step. Okay, step means step in. Next means step over. Debugging in a nutshell. That just makes that made me think of like a shell called nutshell. Oh my god, do they have that? Dude, if I if there's a nutshell, I'm using it right now. Fish be oh damn. There seriously needs to be a, a shell called Nutshell. Oh, this is the best idea. Of course, there's no shell called Nutshell yet. Right? I like fish. It would be totally ridiculous, right? And an SEO nightmare. Totally. What's this step I thing? Oh, an instruction level single step? I've never even heard of that. What's up, Barcore? It's going really good, man. I'm just learning to command line debug a little bit here. Oh, step out. There's step. It's just called finish if you want to step out. Okay. I need to create my own little... um. LL debugging in a nutshell. Let's do that right here. I'm just going to create a little LL debugging. My own little cheat sheet. Because I forget this all the time. <laughs> Good to the plague of humanity, but we love them. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to learn it because I think I can overall be a little bit faster at debugging inside of the command line. First of all, when you run from when I run from Xcode, Xcode just has a lot more stuff going on. So when you run, it takes it takes longer. So command line debugging is a little bit faster to load. It's also a little bit faster to inspect a specific variable. In Xcode, I have to go move the mouse around, find the thing, drill down into the bit of the the entity or the structure that I'm trying to look at and in the command line you can just be like print e dot name and you're done so thanks man I am rocking the long hair yeah I think I do I prefer a GUI as well but if I can shave off a few seconds every time I debug that's like minutes each day you know what I mean Yeah. Oh, you mean is there is it a command line GUI? I don't want to use a GUI GUI, but like a command line text based GUI would be pretty sick. Nutshell, I'm telling you, somebody needs to create a Unix shell called Nutshell. Uh, you, what's I'm GUI? I never heard of I'm GUI. 
Okay, what I wanted to do was step in. Oh, oh, I'm creating my cheat sheet first. Okay. Obviously run. Um, there's B. R is run. B is set a breakpoint. Yeah, it's not that cool, man. Is I'm GUI uh, cross platform? Yeah, quick and dirty UIs, cool. Um, so there's run. So there's step over. I think C is continue. Oh, sweet. That's cool. Ah, oh, they didn't list continue on here. That's weird. Oh, you can just set break it name? That's kind of cool. Check this out. Oh, corn nut. <laughs> so, I love this guy's name. Yeah, corn nut. Oh, man, I wonder if that's, is, uh, maybe I'm just pronouncing it wrong. It's a bloat-free GUI for C++. Nice. It's fast, huh? It's cool. Software using Oh, what's that? I just want to see some screenshots here. All right, man. Cool. You got a show to watch? Cool, man. I'll check out this Voltron. Here we go. Post your screenshots. Boom. Sweet, I've never heard of I'm GUI. I think it's super cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark this. I'm bookmarking you, oh corn nut. I'm GUI. I wonder if I'm even pronouncing that right. Where's my uh, pocket? Pocket that. A hacky debugger UI for hackers. <laughs> It's Python, like maybe that's command line. That's cool. Sweet, this is pretty cool. Looks like kind of like the best of um, Yeah. Huh. 
Huh. This looks cool. And it's called Voltron. I mean, how can you go wrong with calling... Calling your project Voltron. Huh, this might be the jam right here. It's kind of cool. Installation, quick start. Yeah, you just basically add something to your LODB in it that loads, Volt that loads Voltron. Wow. It may make you a sort of code avenger <laughs> because of its name. Villain in a Transformers movie, Voltron man. You know Voltron. The there's it's a it's an old robot. It's it's like five different lion robots that all combine into one big robot called Voltron. And um, there's a new cartoon series. It's pretty dope. There's the old cartoon series with Voltron. You never use it? Yeah. This li actually looks good, though. I don't think I want to do this right now. I want to finish these grenades. But this looks really promising. This could be awesome. It could be a better... Basically, I'm using something called... Um, what's the thing I'm using right now? Yeah, right? Voltron? Uh, the, I'm using... Um, uh, it's called NVIM GDB. It's this basically it integrates into into NVIM to NeoVim, sorry. Yeah, gotta do the grenades first though. So C's continue. Oh gotta finish this cheat sheet real quick. The stepping, where's the step? Oh, sweet. I didn't know you could just type info local. Do you get all the local variables? What? Doesn't work. Oh, it's frame. Frame variable. That's cool. Frame variable shows you the local. So you can type FRV. All right, that's cool. FRV show locals. Um, P of course is the print. Yeah. Um, M, M. Oh, you can display a certain variable every time. That's really long, though. I'm not sure if I'm going to type that. Yeah, we'll see you next time, Vegas. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you next time. Ah, where's the step at? There it is. Okay, step or S is to step in. And step over is next. I use this more often. Uh, 
SI is to, oh, that's an instruction level step. I'm not sure what those mean exactly. Step out is finish. I think that's all I need for now. Oh, that's super cool. You can run until you hit a certain line. This is a, this is a great cheat sheet right here. I'm pocketing that too. Okay, back to the dev, man. We have been not devving for so long now. There's my LDB cheat sheet. I want to step in, which is um, S. There we go. If we can use the grenade. Is there already a grenade out there? Step over. There's not an already grenade out there. Step over. Step over. Oh, now we're, dude. Because I added these comments, and now we're like debugging in the, okay. <laughs> All right, one more try, one more try. At first, of course, I'm a lot slower. Oh, this isn't going to work anyways. It's like ran with the wrong keystroke. Anyways, what happens when I use the grenade? I'm like surrounded by a grenade explosion. Oh, it killed me. It killed me, like, instantly. Yeah, okay, so something's happening where it's... It's causing... Oh, the grenade itself should not have a damage. Yeah, it shouldn't hurt anything. It's, it's the explosion that counts. Okay, that was definitely part of it. So I'm just going to start and press the grenade button rather than running around. Okay, grenade button. It looks like it spawned the grenade entity. We got show label on that. Let's go to grenade explosion and add the show label so we can see what this guy's thinking. Oh, it doesn't have a... Oh, the explosion doesn't remove itself. I pressed the name button. Okay, of course. This doesn't have an AI. This needs an AI, so it just removes itself. If timer begin... Timer, like, zero point... Actually, we can just delay. Delay zero point two, something like that. Oh, oh I used to have, yeah, no. With the old bombs, I think I had a slight delay before it went off or something. But we'll work on that. Yeah, we want, if time begin, delay point two, and then just remove. We can set a timer of zero so it doesn't do the timer begin again. There. So now I've got it. An ex explosive damage um, flag, but I haven't got that hooked up yet. But we are doing a lot of damage, and we're removing that grenade entity after a second. Oh, there it goes. Wait. Oh, there it is. I see it now. It's like way up in the air. <laughs> so weird. It sits there for a second. 
Oh, there it exploded that time. Oh, so much chaos. Okay, we really gotta break this down. I gotta use Xcode to debug. It's just too much. It's like putting it in hard mode to try and debug in the new debugger right now. So would we, um, create the grenade Hold on, how about this? If timer is less than 1.5 and we're stuck then, yeah, okay, so if I press the button, it spawns the entity, but then if I finally, if I move out of the way, it, it finally moves. So it's like stuck on me. Oh, 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 I know, I see what it is. The move mask. Oh, I got a way, I got a way better way to do boomerangs and um, yeah okay so the boomerang and the bomb both have masks but really we want to we want to change player masks inside the collision component and the move component to be everyone but the other team So we'll do this smartly in a function called use weapon. Whenever we create a weapon, after it's created, we add an extra mask. So if weapon dot collision dot mask dot has C category player weapon dot collision dot mask dot clear C category player and add in the extra mask. We'll do the same thing for the move component too. So if weapon.move and if weapon.move.mask has player, then erase player and add in the extra mask. So there, both of our move component and our collision components now we'll replace player with all of the other teams for a mask. So that'll be smart. Rather than having to um, to manually do that for an entity, it just does this for any time we're creating a weapon. We wanna we wanna hurt our we wanna hurt everyone but ourselves when it comes to players. So this is kind of like a smart. Oh, why didn't that breakpoint work? Go breakpoints, break away. Break away from your non breakiness. It's getting odd here. All right, we get are we running. Run it, run away. Run away with it. Press the grenade button. Cool. If weapon dot collision. Wait, wait, wait. Is this 
move. I think this is move. Okay, yeah. Weapon now move. I know I'm totally cheating, man. I'm totally cheating. I'm trying to actually get some development done, actually. I know, I created that whole cheat sheet, and I'm like, I gotta use LLDB from the command line, and now I'm just like, screw it. I actually want to get something done right now. And I'm familiar with this interface. Okay, so our weapon.move. See, this is the part, though, that's slow, right? Having to drill into this weapon.move.mask. See how long it took me to do that? It probably took me five to ten seconds just to go down to this mask, right, and, and, and view it. So once I finally get fast at the command line, I just have to force myself to use it enough to where I can easily look up a mask. Like, I'll be like, print e.collision.mask, and boom, it's that fast, rather than having to take ten whole seconds of drilling down. I don't deserve this. I deserve better. Okay, so we've got no team mask, and we've got the player mask. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so we clear player. That becomes zero, cool. And we add in the everybody but us bits and, uh, I moved. There we go, yeah, cool. We've got all those bits except for my team. Nice. Oh, but spawning, shoot, when we spawn an entity, we also need to do the same thing. But no, no, in Songbringer I made it so when you set off bombs you also got hurt from your own. Might be fun to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's got watch. Yeah, I think I think LLDB has it too. I think Xcode actually does use LLDB, so it has to be using it somehow. Okay, that time, let's try running it without the debugger this time. All right, press the grenade button. All right, it actually did it. But it's getting stuck and then not exploding. So why is that? Okay, boom. Well, let's check if the boomerang still works too. This is a this is a system wide change here. Got to make sure everything's working. Okay. Yeah, cool, it's working. Wait a minute. Why isn't he getting hurt anymore? Oh, is this is the sword not working? Oh. We got to change the sword too. The sword's collision mask now needs player. It's like that's weird. Swords aren't working. My sword isn't working. There, it's working now. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. How much time do I got left in the stream? Oh, is it really already 2.30? Shoot, I gotta go. I got an appointment at 4 p.m. today. And I still have to eat lunch. What can I do in like two minutes? I really want to finish these grenades a little bit. Um, oh, I can get them to explode when they stop. See, it should be stopping right there. What is up with the... Hold on. Let's go to grenade. And set an offset. Maybe that's why it's not... Oh, I wonder if it has the right Z position too.
Oh, whoa, I saw it there off in the corner. Yeah, something's really up with its, its art positioning. But, does it hit the... No, it's not even doing it. Ah! Ah! Chaos. Well, at least I've got the basic structure for a grenade already started. I, I just have to work out why it's not working when it's getting stuck. Why it's why it's like visually not on the screen in the right place. And then I gotta get it to move in his in a trajectory so it has a nice Z acceleration and it like goes up in the air and arcs and comes back down and then explodes all nice. I'll get this working, but I do have to go, fortunately, have an appointment today. I have one of those things that they call, you have to actually set a time with someone else that you'll both be there at the same position in the world at the same time. It's called an appointment. And uh, I, this is the first appointment I've ever had because it is quite atypical. Having to meet somebody at a certain time yeah, we've got to trust some gravity. You know what? That's probably the problem in right now. I'm not trusting gravity enough. Ha. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining, brother. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching the stream, everybody on YouTube, everybody here on Twitch. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time.